Hi, this is Jim Linnell. You know, I've been doing leather work for over 50 years now, and I've been teaching classes all over the place on behalf of Elk Track Studio. And of all of the classes that I've ever taught, there are none that are more important than what I'm going to show you right now. And that is, how do you get started in leather work? There are some basic techniques, some things that you need to learn, and if you learn those correctly, they will make a huge difference on how much enjoyment you get out of your leather work. So stay with me as I walk you through doing a pattern just like this, which will teach you how to use all of the most basic leather working tools. We're about to begin our stamping, and I'd like to show you the uh, first of all the tools that we're going to use. These six tools right here represent all of the basic stamping tools that are used in most leather carving. Um, and if you learn how to use each of these six tools correctly and the techniques that each one of these require, you're going to be well on your way to learning to do leather work. Um, and so that's what I'm going to show you. The first tool that I'm going to use is called the camouflage. And I'll tell you right off that the sequence that I'm going to use these tools in is uh, um, is kind of, well, it's, it's, it's historic. It's the way I was taught. It's the way um, a lot of the great leather workers like Al Stolman taught it. And uh, it's, it's just a, a good, good way to get through it. And there's some reasons why these need to be used in this, this sequence. So the camouflage tool, where do we use that? The camouflage tool, first of all, is a shell-shaped tool. It's kind of looks like a, a big eyelash. It's got a bunch of lines that radiate out from a half circle. And uh, we, when we use this tool, sometimes we'll use it mostly straight up and down so that we get almost a full impression we'll all, where we can see almost the full uh, width of the tool. But like here in the flower petals, what I'm doing is I'm creating some texture in the middle of these flower petals. And so I started out with a bit more force right there on that dotted line that I used to, uh, you know, to, to show me where the seeds are going to go. Uh, and then I got lighter and lighter and lighter as I went up each one of those. So there I used almost a full impression. And I'll do the same thing. We've got a couple of petals down here. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and do the same thing in those petals as well. Put uh, that texture running away from there. Um, one of the other places that we use it, or a couple of other places that we use this, is um, we use it on the on the uh, uh, scroll. This this little curly cue that you see right here, this is a scroll. This is one of the basic um, f design elements in a lot of western floral carving. And it comes to a very tight turn right here. And I have this, this camouflage tool that I have uh, kind of matches it. It doesn't match it exactly, but by tipping it up so that just the corner of it gets a really deep impression, um, I, I really kind of pronounce where the end of that scroll um, comes to a, its, its um, tightest part there. Um, and so that's one of the places we use it. We also use it uh, here in the middle of, of this leaf. Um, right here, it, I was talking about some of those classic design elements. This right here, this leaf right here is called an acanthus leaf, and it's one that you'll see again in a lot of leather work. And one of the characteristics, it'll usually have this big broad petal in the middle, and then it'll have a leaf off of each side of that petal. And then in this broad petal, there's often a line that runs right up the middle of it. It's kind of like a crease running up the middle of that leaf. And we make that we give that some roundness by using this camouflage tool we'll use this on the inside of that curve and this is kind of a general rule I guess um, when we use this camouflage tool around a or on a an acanthus leaf we will usually use um, it on the inside curve okay but one of the things you'll see me doing here is I have this tool angled at quite a bit so that I'm only getting a partial impression. The impression is quite deep here on the corners, right there in that cut. In fact, I put the corner of this tool right in that cut, and then I have it angled, though, so that that impression fades out before it gets maybe um, a third of the way across the width of that tool. And the end result of that is that it looks like this leather now rolls over like this down into that, that center uh, cut that runs there. So that's one of the other places that we uh, use the camouflage tool. We also use it sometimes on the, 
on the uh, the stem of a flower. Um, this flower right here has a, a stem running up, the, the holding it holding it up, and um, we'll usually put a, some kind of a texture on that. So when I do that again, I have to use just the corner of the tool to make impressions that um, don't 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 cover up more than I want them to. Um, and the thing I guess that makes this camouflage uh, work look really good is being consistent in the spacing. Um, you want to uh, have them uh, the same distance apart all the way up the length of a stem or like all the way up the middle of that acanthus leaf. The, the spacing between each one of these impressions is kind of uh, kind of what makes these look right. So, And uh, here I'm putting a little part of an impression on the other side so it almost looks like I had a small camouflage tool that reached all the way across this stem leaving this kind of a um, well kind of a, a, a wavy texture running up the stem so um, that's one of the other places that the um, camouflage tool gets used um, so and that that's the camouflage tool that that's what it does it, it adds roundness it adds texture like in the flower petals here but it adds roundness where we use it on the the leaves uh, like on this acanthus leaf, and, and that that's what it does. Um, we do use it, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and put some around the outside of this um, this part of the design that, that turns into the scroll. We'll, we'll help to give this outside edge kind of that same rounded effect by running some corner impressions along it as well. One of the things I hope you're seeing um, is that where I'm using this tool, you notice how it's turning a, a, a nice rich color in here? And you'll see that more with this next step, but this is called burnish, and that's what um, helps you to get good contrast in your design. Uh, in fact, this next tool that we use is called the pear shader, and I'll just use it here just to show you what, what burnish really looks like. We, we'll be using this in the petals and had to create kind of a 3D effect, but but you see how that turns a nice rich brown? Well, that color is something that you want to get out of your leather working, and then that color is caused by having just the right moisture content in your leather. This leather, again, it might look like it's almost dried out. Um, it, it's almost back to its original color. You can still maybe see a little discoloration there. But what causes this, this burnish is not whether it looks wet or doesn't, but it's how much moisture is in the inner fibers.